everybody. It's Fa here. And Jack, what's up? Great. Great. <laughs> Hope you all uh, doing you know, well. Another stream. Another stream. Happy Friday. It's uh it's Friday, it's 10. 10 p.m. on the East Coast over here. Yeah, give us a drop down below. Let us know if you're here. Um, if you're what's up, not on the Israel? YouTube Maybe um, after a country. Hey. Go to youtube.com forward Sunday slash the philosopher. Make sure to hit like and subscribe and notifications we don't have a cute animation yet we, we need to make a cute animation smash that like we gotta smash it smash yeah it. we'll physically <laughs> smash the like Hello. hey what's up paul what's up what's up john representing your states i so see everybody's coming cities. on in so what's we up? got a fun low-key but fun night yeah, so yeah. it's another uh, monthly live stream and uh, brought to you by my monthly supporters over on Patreon and Subscribestar. And uh, yeah, today's or this month's topic that was chosen by everybody was, well, not everyone, uh, but yeah, the poll. Democracy is always the, a failure. The, the option that was chosen the most, majority <laughs> ruled, I guess. Uh, it was about how the government actually had uh, radiation experiments performed on U.S. citizens. So we're going to be going through another history, uh, historical event here. And then just like we do every month, we're going to have a segment on some memes. Anything else that we were going to do? Um, tonight, that? nothing crazy. Yeah, we're just going to go over okay. the topic. We'll do the memes. We'll mention some stuff like what's coming up. So, for example, for the memes. Um, yeah. Oh, and yeah. Then and our events. We got events. We have, we right. have, um, we're going to Pork Fest. Yeah. Let's start there. Let's start with the. Okay. Events. Talk about that. Yeah. So, uh, coming up in terms of events for this year, uh, we have Pork Fest coming up in June. That's next month. And it's from like June 20, oh, June 19th to June 25th. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It just, it, it it's going to be a really, huge year for pork fest uh i myself we ourselves have never been mm -hmm. and as you can see on the screen this is going to be their 20th annual uh freedom festival so they've had lots of turnout last year they sold out um so i anticipate this year being like the second decade you know celebration is going to be pretty massive um so really excited for that uh in addition we're actually going to be uh, having our own concert as well. Um, be cool if they could put it on the website. But well, I did just well, and we should say specifically, yeah, I did yeah, just send them ahead. the images uh, today for that. But yes, we're officially booked to be a main event, um, you know, for Pork Fest. So we actually are going to perform live um, on the main stage at the Pavilion or the Pav. Yeah, several of our um, songs, right, for thirty yeah. minutes. So. I don't even know anymore because it's like oh. like originally the window like they so we, we were gonna do 30 minutes and then they said six to seven as a whole window so like i guess we could do stuff up to an hour so maybe we'll talk in between our music of this or that or just you know whatever but definitely between the 6 and 7 p.m hour on tuesday of the event um and i think that's tuesday let me just make sure because uh, i'm pretty sure it starts on sunday so let me just make sure i'm not goofing this and okay. okay so it is tuesday the oops wrong month tuesday the 20th right so tuesday the 20th is when our main performance is at pork fest we're going to be doing live music um you know for that i think that's uh that and also we have uh, uh we're going to be performing a couple of our songs not as long and, and not on a like a as huge of a stage or anything but it's going to be uh for the emo caucus <laughs> They like a couple of our songs and found it emo-esque. So we're going to go ahead and perform that as well. Is that also Tuesday night? So no. So the oh. emo night um, specifically that okay. we're going to perform a couple of our more emo oriented songs. <laughs> um, at this point, I'm pretty sure it's at 845 PM arena to 915, 930 arena, somewhere in there. So between 845, 9. 15, 930. So um, we'll be doing you know a second performance with different songs from the main. So if you see this stuff on the main on Tuesday night, definitely go to the emo night too, because we will be doing different songs from the main for emo night. So you'll have multiple, you know, opportunities for, for cool, fun music and dancing and goofing. 
Okay, so that's Tuesday and Thursday. Tuesday and Thursday. Okay. Right, of the pork fest. And then where would, do you know where people would find information? Like, not just you verbally saying it, you know, but like, can you find it on the website? So um, basically, just to make it as easy as possible, yeah. go to porkfest.com. So P O R C F E S T, porkfest.com. I mean, if you just Google porkfest, it's going to come right up because it's, you know, it's a thing. So, but that's, you know, you'll have everything up there that you need. It has come and stay, directions, festival. I'm, all I'm more stuff. just curious about like the tickets. Like, yeah, has, so ticketing tickets. and then like if they wanted to mm -hmm. come see our concert or anything like that, how would they find information about that? So, and is there separate tickets for There's no tickets? separate tickets. So okay. Pork Fest is just one ticket for the whole thing. Got it. And so you can come okay. for as long or as little as you want. Roam around, right. see all the other vendors exactly. and, and whatever heck is going on. I'm so excited. Exactly. All the different tents. <laughs> so, there, yeah, cool. and there's cool stuff there, too. Not just obviously us, us doing music. There's all kinds of vendor, vendors, vendors, and people. <laughs> what are you from the UK? Right. Vendors. Providing delicious cool. food, selling gold and silver and crypto and other Ooh. stuff and other types of cool creative projects. People hanging out, having talks. So it's like everything oh, and, and everything. And people open carrying. Yes, people There's will have be a lot of that. Open carrying. Because you can uh, open carry in New Hampshire. Right. There probably will be some ham, bacon, bits, loin, butt ribs. Exactly. There probably will be some of that. <laughs> Definitely going to be some barbecue. wonder if you've been there, Paul. <laughs> so. Um, Sounds good. That's a lot of different pork. I um, like beef myself. You know, I'm, I'm a beef person. <laughs> I can deal. I can deal with pork once in a while. But once in a rare minute. I like beef. And then we should also mention here. Yeah. So that's Pork Fest. Hope to see you guys next month. A lot of you. And uh, I think there will be lots of people who are going to meet in person for the first time. So definitely. Yeah. Um, and then our other event. Uh, thanks for pulling up. That's uh, with Lou Perez. For those of you that don't know, uh, he's a comedian. He also uh, was the main like actor for We the Internet TV for a long time. Um, and we're going to be hosting a unique FA events, uh, never before done. Uh, we've had two FA events before, but instead of just a talk, this one's going to be a comedy show. So we have three different events. I'm, I'm really excited about this. This is in September in Florida. Um and the first segment is going to be with Lou. Uh, he's going to have a comedy show for an hour. And at the end, you'll have uh, everyone's going to get a picture with Lou as well. Um, and Jack and I, if you want. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll be there. So that's the comedy show. If you want to get tickets there, you can get that separately. Uh, we'll also have a gun range event with Lou as well. Uh, hence, don't shoot Lou. Um, you know, he's a comedian. Like, I don't know how good he is at shooting. I'm really excited to see. <laughs> how I how I compare, you know, and if I if I can like get a tar, I'm definitely gonna challenge uh, Lou to a, a target practice duel. That'll be fun. Uh, but yeah, that's for an hour as well. So you can come, bring your own guns, bring your own ammo, and come shoot. Uh, and then lastly, we're gonna have a VIP hangout. So that's the one at down there. And uh, you may or may not see some other special guests beyond just. Uh, but we'll see with uh, Lou, Jack, and I will definitely be there. And that's just for us to hang out, lounge, um, meet the other people that are there. Uh, yeah, and just relax after shooting all those guns. So, yeah, I'm really yeah. excited for that. So just check that out. Um, right. See the different events, and maybe you can come out uh, here in, in Florida. Right, so just Google so, Don't yeah. Shoot Lou comedy event, and you could just Google those terms. They'll come right up. Okay. And is the website uh, fuevent.com? Yeah, it should be fuevent. So, like, got it. Yeah. Which makes sense because we only ever post one event at, the at a time. <laughs> so, yeah. So, if you just go to fuevent, singular, dot com. Yeah. Or just Google uh, don't just, shoot Lou, whatever. Yeah. Or don't shoot Lou event. That works yeah. too. Cool. All right. So, yeah. Oh, thanks, Paul. <laughs> Pretty decent with the karma. I, I, and also I think thanks so. to Robert. I think so. Oh, hey, Robert. Thank you so much. What's up? <laughs> Hope you are well. <laughs> yeah. Nice to see you again. Okay, oh, yeah. So those are the things. events coming up. Oh, yeah, go New ahead. New book. So, yes, I do want to plug this because I was just on the Tom Woods show for this book specifically. So this is my latest nonfiction book, A Vision yeah. for a Libertarian Future. It's super chat. cool. It is the sequel to my first book, Libertarian Voluntarism. Um, it's got a great cover, and I think you could see right here, look how beautiful it is, right? You can see it's got 
It's got Rothbard up there. It's got Macy's. <laughs> it's got Molinari. It's got Bastiat, right? Look at that. That's just a piece of art. Even if you don't read it, just the cover alone is worth it. But it's definitely worth reading because it gives you a good sense of how we can be consistent in our advocacies for reducing the size, scope, and power of the state. And it does so in a very uh, intelligent and kind of cogent way of getting you to think about, oh, okay, how, how do the things in the real world, like right now, things we can think about and apply this to, like, you know, kind of manifest. So it's, you know, really great way to help arm yourself with some facts and some knowledge. And it even talks about, you know, who will build the roads. So uh, definitely pick that up. It's on Amazon. You can also like network to it by going to jackvloyd.com. Um, but yeah, I, and I especially do want to plug uh, really quick here that um, Tom Woods episode. Let me see if we can find here. Uh, yeah, I really like um, your series so far. I mean, they they go together. The first one is about just laying out the base principles. You know, just if you want to understand like what we stand for mm-hmm. and what it means to be a libertarian voluntarist, like that's what that book uh your first one is about right and if you see right here it's um on palm Woods show it's specifically episode uh two three two six so if you check out his show it's a great show highly recommend it he interviews awesome people he asks great questions and he asked me some great questions as well so i think you'll find it fascinating um you know definitely you know even before getting the book feel free to to listen to that show it's you know on youtube and it will give you kind of a sense of what it's all about. And I think it'll inspire you to want to actually read the rest of the book. So definitely check out Tom Woods TV, subscribe and check out his membership thing too, um, because it's a lot of fun to hang out with other like-minded people in Liberty. So, But yeah, and then uh, I like that it pairs well with uh, your first book together. So learn the principles. And then now how do we actually like get to a world where the principles are respected, that you are actually having individual body and property rights respected for all you know and how do you have a transition to that sort of society from the current society that we have which is this monolithic centralized you know governmental system across the board that's over bloated and inefficient so yeah check out the book check out the podcast and yeah let us know your thoughts definitely open to being challenged there and if you have any ideas on mm-hmm. on different ways to transition let us know yeah so that's what we want to do. We really just want to reduce the size, scope, and power of the state and stop just having all these victims. So speaking of victims of the state, let's get into the monthly topic. Uh, so going to be reading an article today um, about how the government performed radiation experiments on U.S. citizens. So let's just get through it uh, here. Um, okay. So this is from interestingengineering.com. Okay. All right. Marcia Wendorf. All right. Let's uh, read the... Okay. So nuclear guinea pigs, radiation experiments performed on U.S. citizens. So this was during the Cold War, apparently. And the U.S. conducted experiments with radioactive substances on its citizens. Well, its citizens. See how there's like that possessive like word there? So we do. Okay. All right. So starting here in a dark corner of U.S. history lies the unfortunate fact, <laughs> many unfortunate facts, that between 1944 and 1974, three U.S. agencies, the Atomic Energy Commission, the Department of Defense, and the National Institutes of Health conducted more than 4,000 secret radiation experiments on U.S. citizens, including children. Between April 1945 and July, July 1947, uh, in experiments performed at hospitals in Rochester, New York, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, Chicago, Illinois, and San Francisco, California, subjects were injected with various types of radioactive substances. 18 subjects were injected with plutonium, six with uranium, five with polonium, and at least one with americium. Is that how you say it? All right, well, you can read it there. In 1986, the U.S. House Committee on Energy and Commerce released a report entitled American Nuclear Guinea Pigs, Three Decades, 30 Years of Radiation Experiments on U.S. Citizens. Then in November 1993, journalist Eileen Wilson began a three-part story in the Albuquerque Tri- Tribune newspaper that described government experiments that were conducted on Americans during the Cold War. For her effort, Wilson received a Pulitzer Prize in 1994. 
Walsam's reporting led to the creation of the Advisory Committee on Human Radiation Experiments by President Bill Clinton. The committee published its results in 1995. The report described the following instances where Americans were dosed with radioactive su substances without their express knowledge or full consent. So here are some of the summarized facts here. So 57 normal adults were fed spheres containing radioactive uranium and manganese at the Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory in the 1960s. 20 elderly students were, uh, I'm sorry, 20 elderly adults were fed radium or thorium at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology during the early 1960s. 18 terminally ill patients were injected with plutonium in hospitals in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, Rochester, New York, Chicago, and San Francisco. Six emotionally disturbed or homeless patients with normal kidney function were injected with uranium salts at the University of Rochester from 1946 to 1947. Wow, so for a year, I mean, it, you know, even one person is a lot, you know, so just talking like six, 50. Okay, going on, 131 inmates at Oregon and Washington State prisons had their testicles irradiated between 1963 and 1971. Jeez. Uh, 14 people in Richland, Washington were exposed to tritium during 1951 and 1952, either by breathing, eating, or bathing in it. 102 people were fed particles containing strontium, barium, or cesium between 1961 and 1963 at the University of Chicago in the Argonne National Laboratory. 54 patients in a hospital near the Oak Ridge Institute for Nuclear Studies and who had normal intestinal tracts with radioactive uh, calcium and strontium. Oh, whoops, sorry. <laughs> and who had normal intestinal tracts were fed lanthanum uh, 140 during the early 1960s. Uh, 12 terminally ill cancer patients at Columbia University and Montefiore Hospital in the late 1950s were injected with radioactive calcium and strontium. 14 people in 19, it's like a long list. 14 people in 1967 were either injected with or drank radioactive promethium at the Hanford Environmental Health Foundation and Battelle Memorial Institute in Richland, Washington. 10 people were either injected with radioactive phosphorus or else fed Columbia River fish, which were contaminated with radioactive phosphorus in 1963. Uh, what is that picture? Uh, so is that actually from one of the experiments? Inhaling radioactive substances. Yep. So from the Department of Energy. So they're Energy. inhaling wow. it in there, yep. Mm -hmm. Gosh. Okay, so... This section is about uh, the specific experiments that were on infants and pregnant women. So in 1945, researchers at Vanderbilt, if you know that name, university gave 829 pregnant women what were described as vitamin drinks, but which actually contained radioactive iron. The experiment was to see how fast the radioisotope passed into the women's placentas. Uh, yeah, that's really messed up, you know, when you, you don't even consent to that. It's horrible. Um, while the mothers experienced rashes, bruises, anemia, hair and tooth loss, and cancer, at least four of the children who were subsequently born to these women died from cancers, including leukemia. In 1953, at the University of Iowa, the Atomic Energy Commission began testing the effect of radioactive iodine on newborns and pregnant women. Researchers gave between 100 and 200 microcuries of iodine-131 to pregnant women to determine whether radioactive iodine crossed the placental barrier. Another step, just seems like it, it would, okay. <laughs> Another study gave 25 babies who were less than 36 hours old and who weighed between 5.5 and 8.5 pounds, iodine-131, either by mouth or injection, then measured the amount of iodine in their thyroid glands. An AC, AEC study at the University of Nebraska College of Medicine fed iodine-131 to 28 healthy infants through a gastric tube in order to gauge the amount of iodine in the infant's thyroid's glands. During 1946 and 1947, researchers at the University of Rochester injected uranium-234 and uranium-235 into six people to see how much uranium their kidneys could tolerate before becoming damaged. 
1949, near the Hanford site in South Central Washington State, the Atomic Energy Commission released iodine-131 and xenon-133 into the atmosphere. It contaminated a 500,000-acre area, which included three small towns. That's huge. <laughs> wow. Um, in 1945, Albert Stevens received the diagnosis of stomach cancer at the UC San Francisco Medical Center. Without informing Stevens, though, a former Manhattan Project doctor uh, so Manhattan Project was the creation of the first nuclear uh, bomb. Uh, bomb. Right. Um, so a former Manhattan Project doctor, Joseph Gilbert, had see, uh, had Stevens secretly injected with two isotopes of plutonium, uh, PU-238 and PU-239. Prior to, ex prior to experimentation, scientists had assumed that 90% of injected plutonium would be excreted from the body. However, what they found was that actually 90% of the plutonium remained in patients' bones for decades. It's like literally the opposite. And they're like, oh yeah, we assumed it'd be fine. <laughs> it's, it's actually like the complete opposite. Um, Stevens, in fact, did not have cancer. However, his accumulated dose of PU-238 was higher than anyone had received in history at 64 SV. Not familiar with those units. Despite the fact that he did not develop radiation sickness. Neither Stevens nor his relatives were told about the plutonium he had received. However, in 1975, when Stevens had died, his cremated remains were surreptitious surreptitiously acquired by the Argonne National Laboratory Center for Human Radiology and the National Human Radiobiology Tissue Repository at Washington State University. Uh, so surreptitiously, is that secretly? Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. I wonder how they got away with that with his relatives there. Um, a warm bowl of radiation. Sounds disgusting. Okay. In December 1995, a lawsuit was filed against the odd combination of the Quaker Oats Company, that is weird, and renowned university, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. In an almost unthinkable experiment conducted during the 1940s and 1950s, MIT provided radioactive isotopes, which were added to the calcium and iron additives contained in Quaker Oats oatmeal cereal. The oatmeal was then served to 74 children who lived at the Fernand School, a state home for the mentally retarded located in Waltham, Massachusetts. Sorry, I have to pause. Is this article written in the 90s because they're allowed to say retarded? Anyway. All right. <laughs> the radioactive tracers allowed researchers to track the absor absorption of the calcium and iron into the children's bodies. Hey, Derek. The entire purpose of the experiment was to give Quaker oats. That is a really weird, like, you know, combination and partnership with MIT there. But anyway, the purpose of the experiment was to give Quaker oats a leg up in its rivalry with cream of wheat cereal. A lawyer representing the children, Michael Matchen, was quoted in a 1995 Associated Press article saying, there was an utter failure to treat these kids with any human decency. In October 1995, then-President Bill Clinton apologized to the Fernand School, and the president of MIT also apologized on behalf of the school. Okay, that's how it ends. That's a weird way to end. But, okay, cool. So now you know, oh my gosh, that's, I mean, that's just, again, what we try to cover in these monthly topics that are picked or, you know, whatever gets picked. Often uh, the topics that get picked are just that what has really, you know, government done to us and our rights and uh, what are the things that they do and have done secretly and clandestinely that are, are crimes against humanity. Um, so there you have it. Another, uh, another example there. So before we move on, hopefully, you learned something there, let me know in the chat uh, if you actually knew that before. Um, and thank you to my monthly supporters for actually choosing that. Really appreciate uh, you guys and, uh, you know, helping to suggest what we do for these monthly streams. Um, so before we get into our last segment of the night, which we're going to be covering, you know, the latest memes. I mean, there's all kinds of memes every month. I mean, like hundreds of thousands and millions of memes. I can't go over it all. But Jack here has picked out the memes that he wants me to see. So I'm excited. I haven't seen them before. So thank you. Uh, but My before <laughs> before we do that, I definitely want to thank our, mo our monthly fiducers. So starting with Custom Joe Roasting. 
Uh, this is CJ Roasting Coffee. If you go to cjroasting.com. Oh, let me grab. All right. So I recently picked up a bundle and uh, cover, had covered this last month. So I got three different kinds of coffee. Uh, of course, I mean, I, the, the bundle I got was this, uh, was it Oriental blend or Asian blend? Whatever he called Asian it. Asian blend. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oriental blend. <laughs> <laughs> na, 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 na. Okay. Uh, so yeah, Asian blend. You got Vietnam, medium dark. I'm a, I'm a blonde drinker myself. This is also medium dark Java Dutch estate. And then the one I'm going through now, which is not in here, is a uh, Bali uh, blue. And uh, yeah, it's really good. I think it's also medium dark because it tastes medium dark. Definitely doesn't taste light. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, CJ Roasting. It feels really good to be supporting you. Someone I know is uh, both an ANCAP and well, yeah, pretty much is an ANCAP and <laughs> loves liberty and uh, really supports my show here. So thanks so much. And uh, if you guys want to pick up your own organic coffee, especially if you're like, I'm tired of supporting Starbucks like I was. Uh, just go to uh, cjroasting.com, and if you want to get 10% off their everything bundles, just type in FA-2022. I know it's 2023, but that code's still valid, so yeah, check it out. All right, and Crawford, longtime producer, thank you so much um, for all of your support, and yeah, he is with Taggart Atlantic Healthcare. And last but not least, we have Beto Destrafa. So thank you so much for your support this past couple years. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Just happy to have you guys around and uh, going through this this journey together of like, how do we get liberty in our lifetime? You know, now that we've like, you know, the nature of government. Well, what do we do from here? So anywho, pick up Jack's book. <laughs> Uh, a vision for a libertarian future, proof read by yours truly. That's why you'll see in the acknowledgments. I would like to thank my wife, the philosopher, for always believing in me. That's not how Jack talks. And giving me the opportunity to shift the over cultural Overton window towards the principle of liberty. Yeah, that's how. No, you don't talk like that I don't either. Talk like but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I can't mimic you very well. But thank you. That's so sweet. But yeah, so I, I read through this. And uh, just to give you an idea of the book. So what I love about it is you just go through the table of contents. Um, and you can just go right into the different areas that you're always like, okay, how do we actually get to, for example, sound market money? What is that transition when you have the Federal Reserve and all these central banks, right? How do you do that? Um, what do you do with all of the land that uh, government now controls and we're just talking about the u.s federal government that's what this book is is tailored for this is not like how do you transition the chinese ccp you know what i mean to liberty like no idea this is specifically about the american system <laughs> so anyway check that out vision for a libertarian future jack lloyd all right let's get into some funny memes do we have a segment to play what like the oh yeah, I, I should I should do that. Okay, ready? Yeah. Yes, freeze. Okay, <laughs> I, I should like add a voiceover. Funny. Yes, freeze. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, let's get into some memes. See if I laugh. All right, uh, influencers after giving money money to the homeless man on camera. Now thank me and shake my hand. <laughs> Oh my god. No influencers I know. Okay. Please, my son. He is very sick. Okay, God. This is like <laughs> it's like an IQ tester or something. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. He is very sick. So okay. Oh, a forklift. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Who's he talking to you? But like, who's sick? I don't get it. <laughs> oh, okay. That's funny, though. <laughs> Please, my son. His son's the fork. The fork is sick. The fork is sick. Okay, anyway. <laughs> it's an inanimate object. It's okay. If you, right, if you got it in the, in the comments, <laughs> if you got that one, let us know. Yeah, let me know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, all right. Me when I pronounce Mexico as Mexico. 
<laughs> yeah, and then you start drinking that Jose Cuervo. <laughs> yeah, special. <laughs> and then you go to Taco Bell. Just kidding. I, I feel like if you're Mexican, you probably hate me if I said that. Like, oh, let's get Taco Bell. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm all about those street tacos. Okay. <laughs> and I'm not talking. It's colloquial, Jack. Every time I say street tacos, it's like, oh, you want tacos from the street? No. No, I want a food truck. Okay. That's called street tacos. They're on the street. Mexicans on the street. And they make delicious tacos with like <laughs> onions and cilantro. And that's all you need. And on top of corn tortillas. Although, you know, sauce is really good, too. Anyway, moving on to the next meme. I'm really hungry. Uh, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> the neighbor's... Oh, okay, sorry. I read that as one sentence. I'm going to sleep the neighbor's dog. Okay, sorry. I'm going to sleep the neighbor's dog. This is a late night radio show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh... Are I these love this memes? Dog. This dog's face is, is this a are these Christian friendly memes? Because that's what it feels like. I feel like I'm presenting to <laughs> an audience of, of elementary. Some of these, I mean, I don't know. I thought, I thought they were <laughs> like the forklift <laughs> is like okay. These are they, they, you know family friendly show. Some of it's family friendly. Okay, never not mind. All of it. Don't don't all right. Kid leave. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely not a family friendly show. All right. Jordan Stratton. <laughs> Every time I use self checkout, the person in front of me has never used self checkout touch screens or money before. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It's so okay. true. That's hilarious. It's always like, oh my gosh. He's the you, slowest person. You regret, like, you think, like, oh, should we have gone to the self checkout, right? You get to the self checkout and you're checking things out. And then you're like, oh my gosh. You know what I mean? Like, do I regret going to self checkout now? Then you start looking through the lines, like, oh, this might have gone faster if I'd gone over to the the actual like regular checkout line. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. So true. Hilarious. Hilarious. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> when you hear a short person say, <laughs> "When I was little," that's funny. Okay, that's what I you think. You look about at him like, <laughs> "What do you mean when you were little?" Because you're still little. The life of being five feet. For so long, I was four foot 11 and I was legally a midget. Oh, yeah. Being small, yeah. <laughs> safe for grandma. Is that, is that yeah, well, she's not a you? child, so it's fine. That was too close to that's home. That's a cute monkey, though. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he looks like unseasoned boiled chicken. <laughs> he does. Look at this dog. He's so happy. I kind of want to pet him. <laughs> oh, look, he's smiling. Look at that happiness. <laughs> but he does look like boiled chicken. <laughs> Maybe it's just the lighting. It's probably just the lighting. He's a shaved um, dog. They shaved him down. Well, no, he's got hair. It's just it's oh, so it's smooth. Hair? He's just so smooth. Oh, he's, he's a such a pupper. smooth dog. He looks smooth like he's been pupper. shaved. Smooth pupper. All right. This next <laughs> you are never alone on the internet. <laughs> All their hands. PETA. Why is PETA in there? <laughs> <laughs> What's that top one? The Avengers? I don't even know. <laughs> okay. Is that symbol the Avengers yeah, like or the, Star Trek? The British police and they're oh, next to the CIA. Oh, that is British police. Okay, yeah. Because I definitely I see that. <laughs> definitely oh, and PETA is there. You're right. That's so true. That's so true. They PETA's like... <laughs> This random guy why do you think we got so many vegans you can thank PETA, dude <laughs> they made all these videos got these kids scared like oh i can't eat beef or chicken why because when i eat them they die well you know what else dies bugs and plants when you make a house to the exclusion of them and animals and animals anyway anyway i like beef that's why I basically just, you know, if I want to kill an animal, beef. <laughs> all you have to do is just get a carnivore to do it for you, right? If you get a dog to kill a deer for you, then you're just sharing meat with your dog. What's the big deal, right? Dogs, they always say, oh, well, if it's a carnivore, they can eat. Well, True. okay, well, then I'll just have a carnivore. A lot of vegans have kill dogs. Kill for me. Yeah, a lot and of vegans do. have dogs. They don't want kids <laughs> because they're vegan. You know, if you get the cross of vegan who's not just like, you know, animal rights, whatever. If you also get the one who's like an eco-fascist, oh my God, well, then you get a vegan that won't have kids. And yeah. so what do they do? Especially if they're a woman, they can't fight that maternal instinct. So like, let me get a puppy. And and exactly, <laughs> puppies are, or dogs are, are carnivores. Okay, Doge, speaking of Doge. Okay, we're watching a bear eat a fish in a bear documentary. 
watching a bear eat a fish in a fish documentary <laughs> oh yeah that's so true right? like, yeah like but when you watch a bear document right like polar bears time. you're like oh cool bears eating fish <laughs> But if you like learn about like the ocean, you learn about little shrimps and like little clams and stuff. You see them getting eaten. You're like, oh, just kidding. Not me. I'm still like, I'd eat that fish, especially clams and stuff. Okay. Me hoping nobody notices the pimple on my face. That's you every time. <laughs> yeah. Like, right. When you get it, you just. You immediately are like. Why does God. that fish look like it sounds like this? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, maybe it has like a nice British accent, like, hello, Mike, but it's a fucking fish. It doesn't have an accent. Okay. All right. Actually, That's hilarious. Next meme. I was gonna forward. say on that note, it remind <laughs> it reminds me how like uh basically like for, for like the past I don't even know. You can fish? see it right here. So I had this pimple that literally would not oh, go away God. for like two months. This and it's a finally funny healing meme segment. Yes, file as you can see. So basically I learned that like pulling my nose hairs out with <laughs> I could have um, told you that. Wait, I have. Well, I've been telling you that. With a tweezer was not the I've best idea. I think that, that was not a good idea. So scissors <laughs> are the way to go. Just let you know. Scissor your nose hairs. Don't don't pluck them with tweezers, then it's just gonna create problems. So you don't want that in your life. All right. <laughs> welcome to pores one oh one. Poor hey, you know, the hairs in your nose are meant for a specific purpose. This is literally what I told him. But I'm just so glad <laughs> you are no longer plucking your nose hairs. I and know. you are like, okay, let me just trim those little hairs. That's it. No one's going in your nose. <laughs> they don't need a wax nose. And anyone who wants a wax nose is freaking weird. Okay. Well, you need maybe. those hairs. You need those hairs. Why do you have boogers? Okay. Boogers are literally a sign to you that your nose hairs did its job true and caught stuff yeah but so hairs value your nose i I've, I've had to learn the hard way i had to learn the hard way all right anyway cool well i'm glad you're you, you did thanks no 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 okay <laughs> millennials <laughs> millennials finally buying a house oh they're gay oh no okay i get it they're building a, a box where i got it that's hilarious <laughs> You got in before it was too late. <laughs> I did. Just paid my taxes. Oh, I love this guy. The road should be fixed any day now. I mean, love him as a model. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Just paid my taxes and my licenses, you know, license fee and what? <laughs> okay. Mentally unstable, fini financially dependent, high drama, single moms on dating apps. <laughs> you can be part of this. <laughs> Oh, Greta Thunberg. Honestly, that's that's so perfect. <laughs> she is. I know she's an eco-fascist, but is she vegan too? No. I, I I don't know. I'd be knows? surprised. You gotta check her poop to see if it is. If it, I if think it looks I would like just ask her. Good. I would never <laughs> check anyone's poop except my own, just to know. Like, am I healthy? All right, me on my way to work to give it. <laughs> he's so tired he probably is just at like five hours of sleep every day you know he's just tired i think that that's you what's that actor again matt damon is it matt i don't no not, matt, not damon. matt damon um it isn't matt a... though i forgot the matt yeah but that that's that's matt. you when you only get like that that's like you after you've worked 40 hours and they ask you to work five more minutes Shandler. it's literally you is it Matt Chandler? <laughs> Someone no. could tell us. Poor, oh, Chandler. Yeah, Chandler, yeah. There from you go. Friends? Matthew Perry. Matthew Thank Perry. you, Matthew Perry. Matthew Perry. Thanks, Thank dude. you for coming. It's Chandler the from Friends. Chandler from Friends, Matthew Perry. Poor Chandler. Poor Chandler. He's just known. Okay. <laughs> My bed when I try to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> My bed when I try to wake up. So true. I get it. That's funny. <laughs> it's so true. Hard to sleep. <laughs> Hard to get up. <sighs> yeah okay um oh, that was my favorite <laughs> <laughs> oh god so go ahead and destroy the government district godzilla make the people happy <laughs> <laughs> oh my declaration of memes <laughs> love it love it <sighs> declaration of memes all right me i'm gonna start eating healthy also me all weekend pizza hut <laughs> 
No, nah, dude, I've been pretty good. <laughs> I've been pretty good. <laughs> I, I actually would eat it's, some pizza right now. For me, I it's actually pizza. like I'm gonna start eating at home more. Also, me all weekend. Yeah, going out to yeah, <laughs> getting some fun. All right. Yeah, I feel this though. I I, I would like some pizza. <laughs> Sometimes you just need a good pizza. You do. You need a good pizza. <laughs> That's funny. What's up? Oh, super galactic, fantastic dimension. Yeah. Hey. What's up, Jerry? Cool art. Awesome. He is my fellow creator. Oh, Liberty. it's Jerry. What's yeah. up? Very cool. Oh, there we go. All right. Uh, I'm making an omelet. Flips omelet. I'm making scrambled egg. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> that is you. <laughs> okay, dude. When your mom's a chef. <laughs> okay and she doesn't teach you because she's like no i'm chef get out kitchen sit down eat my food she's not gonna teach you it's like you grow up and you you get out and you're like wow i i just know how to boil water <laughs> and make scrambled eggs <laughs> but you've been learning you, you hey uh, some uh you mastered the uh you mastered some the wasted art steaks of the Air over fryer. dried chicken and over dried <laughs> beef <laughs> but uh you know been been doing pretty good what do you say jack you know you, you liking my uh teriyaki beef sometimes like uh you're batting pretty good you're batting I know, 700 it ain't no michelin restaurant okay whatever the one i ain't know, trying to be a chef <laughs> the one that had some bugs in it was kind of tough Oh, that was horrible. I don't know what happened. That came with either. the broccoli yeah, or something. Yeah, I think something happened. There was like some like little flies or something in it. It was a lot. It was not it was good. horrible. Yeah. So wash your, wash your veggies. Yeah, wash usually your... I do. But, you know, we're oh, talking hundreds of meals note, and like one time. Cook your food. So just got to <laughs> defend this bad rap I'm getting. Okay. All right. When the Chinese food was undercooked. <laughs> Right, like the cat wasn't cooked. That's basically what I'm afraid of with you, honestly. To, okay, you for the record, I've the literally cat. never eaten cat or dog. Okay, so just pretty much everything else. <laughs> everything else. Like I've had balut, which is, yeah, it's literally baby birds. Baby birds. And an egg. You know, I've eaten that a lot of times. The soup is so good. It's just really good. Anyway, but I've never had cat or dog. Don't plan to, really don't want to. think it's because like, Born, was born in America and here it's just like cats and dogs are so cute they're domesticated you just know but like chickens frogs alligators deer clams all yeah. kinds of shellfish gooey ducks all kinds of things I just we eat it up we got kangaroo <laughs> kangaroo we've done oh that. kangaroo jerky we did yeah kangaroo jerky. not like fresh not fr well yeah I think cool how to have fresh like would that be a yeah. fresh gator wrestle it out the swamp ah <laughs> Cut its neck. I'm just kidding. Not gonna do yeah. that. <laughs> All right. Adam Sirius, Brow Tweeten. Oh, that's the coolest. Oh man. Why am I the philosopher? I need to be brow tweeting. That's fucking cool. Okay. Nobody. Tomato slices when you start to eat a sandwich. <laughs> so that's true. so true. I hate I hate that. They need to make tomato Work around. slices like with gravity. No, workaround what? is if if you just like chop them up into little pieces. Yeah. I mean, they'll still fall out, still but at least out. you'll get, you know, a lot of them. If turtles hate straw so much, explain this. That's like the thing you need to put down next time. Like <laughs> on Twitter or Instagram, there's some like ad of like, you know, save the planet. Switch to metal straws that impale the back of your neck. If you fall. Yeah, right. Yeah. Anyway. I'm that. Oh, God. All this I know, should be the. This, this is, should have been the ad. This is what the future of where AI Bud holds Light, for where us. Bud Light's going. This is <laughs> what should have been the ad. You know, Dylan Mahaney. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Hunter. I really feel like a woman now. Anyway, look at Hunter Biden. I'm like, God, to be born in that family. No wonder he did so. Much I don't drugs. blame him for doing. That's what I mean. I don't. Doesn't make him innocent. Just I don't blame Hunter Biden for doing crack. That makes sense. How far That's does actually... that dysfunctional tree go back in their family tree? I don't right. know. That makes the most the sense out of anything they've done is him doing crack. I'm like, I get that. If my dad was Joe Biden, I might do crack too. All the memes that came out of the <laughs> it's like a legend now. <laughs> like these are just like infamous <laughs> photos now. All the Hunter Biden leaks, isn't that <laughs> like especially the one where it's like it's like a prostitute and he's grabbing her hair, right? Like so weird 
Okay. <laughs> Creepy. Uh, okay. Okay. Someone's child. Okay. When you're reading Proverbs and you can relate more to the fool than the wise, prudent man. Oh, look. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I only got to Genesis. And then what happened? Got through Genesis, rather. And then I was like, dude, everyone used to be over 900 years old. Holy crap. What happened? What happened? Oh, and then there's a massive it's, flood. There's actually, and then I got bored uh, and I'm like, I don't get it. This doesn't make any sense. And then I was like, I got to like take care of my immediate life. <laughs> they actually hid this in, in, in scripture, yeah. but um, there's a, a special person. But who you're it really well read. Yeah. Well, actually, because they actually had male vitality back then. And Alex Jones brought that back. So male vitality is what let people live past 900. And then, you know, it went, you know, dark after the flood. So how come we don't see anyone past like 100 ish? Well, they just began it. You know, I mean, it's it's right now. Male vitality is just a new thing. So we got to wait. Fake news. All right. <laughs> Door one. You're ugly. Door two. You have no friends. The meme you sent was trash. You better watch your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Like you don't get mad. Eh, you're ugly. Pfft, nothing. <laughs> the meme I sent was trash. Watch your mouth. That's hilarious. I love SpongeBob. Okay. My prof <laughs> my professional writing style. When I start talking, hey, you know no, I mean. That's, <laughs> that's how I feel, honestly. <laughs> that is like me, definitely, when I write. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we are gonna. We need individual body and property rights for all. Right. And like when I talk, I'm like, hey, "Everybody, how's it going?" <laughs> anyway, uh, I Ooh. feel like you thought of me when you you picked these memes. That's what I did. Okay. Fun fact: a majority of archaeologists are women, due to their natural ability to dig up the past. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that true that a majority of archaeologists are women? <laughs> That's so funny. She's so happy digging up the past. Uh, she yeah. just wants to understand you know she's like i just gotta analyze everything comprehend all the details i mean no matter uh, how painful all right next slide it's not ancient history but a lot of women will go back at least a few years <laughs> sometimes six months five years ago you didn't take out the trash exactly and i didn't tell you my needs in the moment but i'm still mad <laughs> <laughs> that you just didn't know Oh my gosh, Shave Keanu looks like he's about to take 50 points from Gryffindor. <laughs> he, he does could have look been a like yeah, um, Snape. That'd Snape. Be funny. That's funny. Like nice guy Snape. Oh, no. The next Harry Potter, they need to have Keanu. Keanu Snape. Hey, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> he really doesn't say much words in the movies he's in. Yeah, he really isn't uh, an action actor, you know? All right. How I sleep knowing I've successfully wasted four months of 2023. I guess real well. Is that American Psycho? Um, I, I don't know if it's from American Psycho, oh, it's but it's oh, definitely it Christian like Bale. That guy. It's definitely Christian Bale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Christian. That guy. Christian yeah, Bale. that guy. New houses. Please don't hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> Old houses. Try that again. I'll break your other hand as well. Right. Oh, that's so cool. You know, if I was from the 70s, I'd be like, they don't make it like the 70s anymore. That's pretty much Wasn't it like piles. refrigerators, like, from the 70s? You could literally, like, be in them for a nuclear fallout? Was that? No. Isn't That's that... just an old wives' tale. Oh, God damn. <laughs> I mean, dang, dang it. I mean, I, I, you know, as many barriers as you <laughs> can have I, I between you and radiation, up, but it, I don't think, unless those things were, like, lead-lined with, like, thick lead. I ain't doing anything. So basically, we're screwed. All right. Yeah, unless you guys you know. <laughs> we need to end the Fed before that happens. Yeah. Or new, I will new say war the worldwide new houses happens. have been a boon, you know, for people who basically are invested in, in wall repair, right? You know, especially th since Monster Energy came out and all yeah. the Kyles who are. It's big. Up walls. It's big wall. Yeah, big wall. They're like, hey, hey let's build these new houses cheap. <laughs> build them cheap. We'll be in bins forever. <laughs> okay. And you know how Big Wall exists? Because the government. Big Wall wouldn't be big without the government. Let's get it straight. Like I said, when I write, I write eloquently. Okay. New York Post. I'm a female crane operator. Men stare at me constantly. <laughs> With what? Binoculars? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, okay. I think... <laughs> 
hundred feet. I up mean, the first okay, edge. okay. I just have to be like, I don't think it's because you're a crane operator. I think it's just because you're a pretty woman. You know, like wouldn't blonde it? Hair. Like wouldn't it just be in general men would look at you? Like you know, Maybe. why would it be that they're like, oh, okay, she's going, she's going, she's not being a crane operator. I'm gonna ignore like whatever. But like as soon as she gets on that crane, oh, like I don't. Maybe if she was in Sweden, no one would care because all the guys have long blonde hair too, or something. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. Science. Yeah. Omg! I just found out that Albert Einstein was a real person. All this time, I thought he was a theoretical physicist. But I'm. Punny. Very funny. But this ain't punny memes. <laughs> this is funny memes. Next. Next. Okay. <laughs> okay. POV. You accidentally liked a post while stalking. <laughs> <laughs> I can't unlike that fast enough. Be like, <laughs> ah! Nah, you just keep it like, oh, well. <laughs> okay. No, I will not. <laughs> No, I will not fill out your census. <laughs> I'm like, how it has a tin foil hat. I, I love the dough. And you see how in the uh <laughs> it's so subtle, the details in the background, it's just pure woods. Right. The reflection pure woods. He's wood. so jacked. Why is he so jacked? That's hilarious. Uh. That's right. Don't fill out the census when they come. Okay. Yeah, I'm an informant for the FBI. I inform them that they're gay. <laughs> <laughs> That's gay. <laughs> Yeah, I like gay. that one a lot. And now it isn't just like gay, stupid. Now it's like, oh, a lot of them are gay, right? The, the federal government is already made up of it is way more men homosexual still, than it used to be. Still do. men, yes. but just men who cross dress now. Diversity inclusion. Yeah. Still, the patriarchy is still there pretty much. They learned how to mold their shape into the feminine form to look less tyrannical. Just look at like the Secretary of Health. <laughs> like, just, just... That's all you need to know. Okay, normal normal <laughs> people today. Hey, I think they're trying to depopulate us. Me for the last five years. You don't say. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's the one that's where they familiar. made into the Wojak version. Mm. That's hilarious. All right. When the date is going great, but she said, tap water is fine. I like Flora. <laughs> <laughs> Band comedies, they're good. They're funny. <laughs> yeah we don't drink that fluoride socialist hey communist hey fascist hey we're all the same <laughs> just kidding not exactly but you know we're each flavors of authoritarianism that's funny yeah, you like that one yeah yeah remember what you are fighting for we got another hunter biden dad another good hunter biden me <laughs> That's what my father spent three years restoring this. It is his life. I mean, it is his love. It is his passion. It is his fault. He didn't lock the garage. <laughs> That's funny. So good. That would be a great remake. Fer Ferris Bueller, except it's the kill dozer. That would be funny. Uh, government indoctrination, homeschool. Yeah, that's right. Don't send your kids to public school. Like, no. just don't. Don't do it. Liberty loving people Get everywhere. Out of there. Just why? Why Get would out you? Of there. Why would you offload? And and this is not just uh, government schools. Frankly, it's it's also just like, how can you not like be you know really want to be the ones to like raise your kids? You know, like if you can, it, it it's you should at least have one parent who can stay home and and actually watch your kids. Um, or of course, you know, if you're going to go outside the state just and go to a, a private school, find one that's actually cares about your child's interests and, in, and in learning because there are private schools that in my opinion are in some ways just as bad and, and do also indoctrinate towards the state anyway. Um, you know, and it's still compulsory where chill children are forced to learn, you know, whatever teacher, you know, is telling them to learn. So really look into that, you know, that idea of like self-directed learning. And what does that mean? You know, just like you self-direct your own learning now, I hope as an adult, right? Nobody's like coming into your house and it's like, hey, pick up this book, read this or that, 
write me a paper and send it back, you know, without your consent. Like no one's doing that. You, you usually just, uh, you should be just like figuring out what you need to learn based on where you're going next in your career. So you really shouldn't have that robbed from you at such an age, that freedom to actually choose what you learn and to dictate your own learning. Like why have that taken from and take that away from someone for like 20 years of their life? They're just going to grow into adult into an adult who doesn't know how to self-direct their own learning. And that's what you see with a lot of people who get out of college. They've they've literally spent 24, 25 years of their life being told exactly how to work, how to research, what books to pick up, you know, and they come out directionless, right? Or just doing the same thing over and over. So yeah, just big decision if you have kids, like where you, who you allow to raise your children, just really care about that. So yeah, there's lots of resources for homeschooling as well. Anyway, that's a rant. Uh, back to funny memes. Okay, <laughs> point of view. <laughs> Um, make the, the, I forgot his name, H3H3, H3, make the rich pay. You're about to hear the worst take of your life. Oh, so true, I Bosch. read that wrong. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you got Bosch. I don't know who the top right guy is. You Ethan used to be something with uh, the Turks, I think. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Ethan, whatever. I don't know who the guy on the bottom right is. Cool. I forgot who he is, but that's funny. <laughs> All right, food pyramid. It's time for your 11 daily servings of bread and pasta. Oh, I remember. <laughs> see, government school, yet another thing. I remember actually like being told that and thinking like, okay, so um, most of my diet needs to be bread, meat, and cheese, and I really shouldn't have much meat. Like, wow, it all makes sense. And then this guy, yes, he was DA. That's funny. Yeah, I mean, it, it's crazy that they they force this on people and they did this, you know, basically because of different lobbying efforts. And then when they had also the promotion of milk and cheese, right, they had, it was it was a bunch Big of dairy. Yeah, they uh, were pushing that on people to because the government was like basically subsidizing cheese production and milk production. They were even like buying up tons of it. Oh, is this it? Oh, I think that's it. Paid for by your tax dollars. So much calamity. Tax so much calamity funded by. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for hanging out. Is there anything else? Is that was that the last meme? Um, yeah, that was the last meme in the uh, meme collection. Oh, so, okay. Again, thanks cool. for hanging out. Don't forget. Again, uh, at, we're gonna be at Pork Fest, so check on out Pork Fest, and we're gonna yeah. be performing live on Tuesday night between the six and seven arena for the main event, and then we have emo night Thursday around eight forty-five to, to be and nine twenty-ish, I think. Um, so we have two it's performances. Be a fun week it's gonna be crazy in the a n e atlantic <laughs> northeast <laughs> and uh and then we have our uh, uh lou perez comedy yeah, show again lou. don't forget that september 9th yeah. saturday so check that on out don't shoot lou google that on eventbrite i won't and but um, i'm gonna have a competition and last but not least that's up. right lou if you're listening oh that's sorry right. last oh, but good. not least no yeah what were you gonna say Oh, I just said Lou if you're listening. Oh, yeah, he's probably not listening. He needs to follow me back practice. on Twitter. So, hey, Lou, if you are watching this, <laughs> I've been following you for a while. You need to follow me back. I didn't mean to distract you. What I'm you're gonna, saying I'm about gonna your book? I'm going to sneak your phone while you're visiting here. I'm going to follow myself back. That's what's going to happen. Okay, that's not creepy. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> so what? <laughs> just kidding. But, um, yeah, Vision for a Libertarian Future, uh, definitely pick it up. It's my latest nonfiction book. It's um, two of three. The third one will be out, you know, mm, January 2024. But in the meantime, again, the, my first book, Definitive Guide to Libertarian Volunteerism, is very well received. Check out the reviews. Lots of people can tell you there. It's great. And then this gives you a sense of like how it can think in the big picture and consistently advocate for the size, scope, and power of the state to be reduced. So on Amazon, check it on out. That's the place to get it. It's very affordable. It's only $9.99. And uh, yeah, easy read. Tons of citations, like 163-ish citations. So lots of resource material for you to further you know, dive into. And uh, you'll be happy and you'll thank yourself. So, yeah. And I definitely want to say, like, um, you know, you're really receptive on Twitter. So I think people can, you see everyone's tweets if they tweet at you, right? 
So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm very responsive on Twitter. So if you, if okay. you, that's true. So if yeah. you get one of my books and you tag me on, on Twitter, uh, let me know. I love hearing, you know, when people get it and take a picture, I'll definitely reshare it. Uh, and thank hey, you. Blaze. And I love reviews, especially when they're five stars, uh, preferably. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I don't buy any reviews. It's all just voluntary. I, I want integrity in my review. So, um, happy to note that, you know, this new book, my whole yeah. This new book has all five stars so far, and then this book is like four point eight, four point nine arena. So, uh, and that's cool. with like over seventy plus reviews too on that. Yeah, so. and I bring up Twitter just because, like, you know, I do a lot both of these, of these books. These like, one, it's about principles. Uh, two, it's how do you apply the principles and get to a free society in our lifetimes? And uh, I, I would love to hear, like, just tweet at Jack, Jack V. Lloyd. Um, if you have like any disagreements or any any differing ideas, I mean, this is all, you know, for like, you know, we just want to stimulate the conversation of like, hey, how do we actually achieve this? You know, how do we turn and, and uh, implement theory and put it into practice? You know, so, yeah, check it out and uh, let us know what you think. And yeah. Thanks for the stream tonight. It was really fun hanging yeah, out. Yeah, it was really fun. So, all right. Take care, everybody. We will wait, wait. What month is this? It's Oh, yeah, right. It's May. So, our next stream, I guess we will pump it out before we go to Pork Fest. So, we'll do another yeah, stream before Pork Fest. Pork Fest, uh, right, on the 19th. Right. So, oh, um, and we should know actually next weekend we're recording a new song. There's so much stuff going on. It's hard to keep it. Ne next week, we're also recording a new song. You're going to really like it. It's, it's pretty amazing. So, it involves both of us. It's going to be fun. Um, and so do stay tuned next weekend. We'll probably have it released like we normally do. Like when we go record it, we usually release it that night. So next Saturday on the 20th, right? The 20th, we will have a new song out and that will um, be serviced to all the usual places. We have it going out on repost network. So it goes onto like um, Instagram and iTunes or Apple music, Spotify everywhere. Um, so we'll have another song uh, for you to jam out to. Oh, next and in addition, I, we didn't mention this at all. So many we are working. Uh, we will be. Uh, so the Break the Great Reset music video campaign ended um, like two weeks ago. Uh, and so, yeah, we are in the stages of planning. We're going to hook up. We have a call on Monday with our um, our video producer and right. director and editor, <laughs> you know, like all the things. Um <laughs> right and like yeah it's going to be really exciting to really plan out this next music video uh if you haven't heard it's for the song break the great reset uh it's more of like liberty rap anthem so i i really like it and uh that's actually definitely one of the songs we'll be performing at pork fest next month so that's that's great Ryan, um so yeah there. be uh i think the music video will uh definitely be out before the before september like before the event with lou I think I, I can't predict it. I guess I yeah, say so not, I can't but... really stick down to it. All I know is that at oh, ten, thanks, ten... <laughs> Thank thanks, you. Thanks, Beethoven. Just drop um, Just talked about you earlier. Yeah. Monthly producer over here. And um, so basically right now <laughs> we're figuring out when we're going to shoot because, uh, you know, we have to have a planning period. There's a costuming thing and that's being custom. We already got the base elements of the costume. Uh, but we have to give it to a special tailor who has to do it with our actor. And then can we, we say what the costumes for? You, yeah. I mean, you could say it. Yeah. You could say it. I feel like if you look at that, if you I, look I, at the album cover, I mean, you, you can know. see it on the album cover. Yeah. Break the great reset. Don't eat the bugs. You know, you know, who it is, Schwab. So we, <laughs> so we have that. And then um, the person who, you know, is, is doing our video work, um, we have to schedule it with his schedule. And we want to do it, I think, at this point, tentatively after Pork Fest. Um, just so that all of a sudden pork fest out of the way. And that gives us more time to like plan and figure out exactly how we're going to shoot it uh, versus shooting it in a city environment. So yeah, it's going to take a few months for the production for that to go. And then of course, editing and visual effects, whatever. But um, I'm hopeful. I'm excited. It should, I mean, it's possible. It I'm comes doing out like burpees July, every day to September. get ready. You know, I want to look fit. Yeah. Pow, pow. All right. So. <laughs> Thank you so much, Faith on Destrapa. Best yes. of luck. You're awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Friday. Um, if you missed it, Beto, I don't know if you're going to be in Florida or could come out, but uh, uh, we're having an event in September. So check that out, foevent.com. And I guess with that, we'll close it out. I'm yes. 
excited for all the things to come yeah. this year. So and there's other to stuff too, but I can't guys. talk about it. So it's there's some stuff that's also top right. secret. So. There's also stuff that's just yeah. secret. There's a, yeah, there's a lot of cool things coming up. So yeah, so just stay tuned. Uh, subscribe if you like what I do. Check out my Patreon and my or and or my subscribe star if you don't like Patreon. And um, yeah, just see you next month and in the comments online, maybe in person as well in Porkfest. We'll see. Mm, yeah, we got a few um, events to see people at. So yeah, yeah. So thanks everyone for all your support. Take care.